Good afternoon, guys and gals. Welcome back to The Strip, Las Vegas. It's theCUBE, live, day four of our coverage of AWS reInvent. Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante. Dave, we've had some awesome conversations the last four days. I can't believe how many people are still here. The AWS ecosystem seems stronger than ever. Yeah, last year we really noted the ecosystem, you know, coming out of the isolation economy, because everybody had this all pent up demand to get together. And the ecosystem, even last year, we were like, wow. This year's like 10x wow. It really is yeah. 10x wow, it feels that way. We're going to have a 10x wow conversation next. We're bringing back data stacks to theCUBE. Please welcome Thomas Bean, it's CMO. Thomas, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks a lot, thanks for having me. Great to have you. Talk to us about what's going on at Data Stacks. It's been a little while since we talked to you guys. Indeed, so Data Stacks, uh, we are uh, the real-time data company, and uh, we've always been involved in technologies such as Apache Cassandra, who actually created to uh, support and take this uh, this great technology uh, to the market. And now we're taking it, combining it with other technologies such as Apache Pulsar for streaming to provide a real-time data cloud, uh, which helps our users, our customers, build applications faster and help them scale without limits. So it's all about mobilizing all of this information that is going to drive the application, going to create the awesome experience when you have a customer waiting behind their mobile phone, when you need a decision to take place immediately. To, uh, that's the kind of data that we, uh, that we provide uh, in the cloud, on any cloud, but especially with, uh, with AWS, and providing the performance that technologies like Apache Cassandra are known for, but also with market-leading unit economics, so really empowering customers to operate at speed and scale. Speaking of customers, nobody wants less data slower. And one of the things I think we learned in the, in the panda, during the pandemic was that access to real-time data isn't a, a nice to have anymore for any business. It is table stakes, it's competitive yep. advantage. There's somebody right behind in the rear view mirror ready to take over. How has the business model of data stacks maybe evolved in the last couple of years with the fact that real-time data is so critical? Real-time data, has been around for some time, but it used to be really niches. Uh, you needed a lot, of, uh, a lot of people, a lot of funding actually to, uh, to implement these, uh, these applications. So we've adapted to really democratize it, made it super easy to access, not only to start developing, but also scaling. So this is why we've taken these great technologies, made them serverless, cloud native, on the cloud, so that developers could really start easily and scale so that beyond project, products could be taken to the, uh, to the market. And in terms of customers, the patterns is we've seen enterprise customers, you were talking about the pandemic, the Home Depot as an example, was able to deliver uh, cupside pickup delivery in 30 days because they were already using data stacks and could adapt their business model with a real-time application that combines, uh, you were just driving by and you would get the delivery of what exactly you ordered without having to go into the, the store. So they shifted their whole business model. But we also see uh, a, a real strong trend about customer experiences and increasingly a lot of tech companies coming because scale means success to them and building on, uh, on, our, on our stack to, to build our applications. So Lisa, it's interesting, data stacks in theCUBE were started the same year, 2010, and that's when it was the beginning of the ascendancy of the big data era, but of course, back then there was, I mean, very little cloud. I mean, most of it was on-prem, and so data stacks, had, you know, had obviously, you mentioned a number of things that you had to do to become cloud-friendly. Yes. You know, a lot of companies didn't make it, make it through. You guys just raised a bunch of dough as well last summer, and so that's been quite a transformation uh, both architecturally, you know, bringing the customers through. I presume part of that was because you had such a great open source community, but also you have a unique value prop, and maybe you could sort of describe that a uh, Absolutely. Bit. So the, uh, I'll start with the open source community, where we see a lot of traction at the, uh, at the moment. We were always very involved with, uh, with the uh, Apache Cassandra, but what we're seeing right now with Apache Cassandra is, is a lot of traction, gaining momentum. We actually, uh, we, the open source community just won an award. Did an AMI had a, an, a, a vote from their readers about the top open source projects and Apache Cassandra and Apache Pulsar were part of the top three, so which is, uh, which is great. We also run, a, in collaboration with the Apache project, the, uh, a series of events around the, around the globe called Cassandra Days where we had tremendous attendance. We, some of them we had to change venue twice because there were more people coming. A lot of students, a lot of the big users of Cassandra, like Apple, Netflix, who spoke at these, uh, at these events. So we see this momentum actually uh, picking up, 
Uh, and that's why we're also super excited that, that the Linux Foundation is running the Cassandra Summit uh, in, uh, in March in San Jose. Uh, super happy to bring that even back with the rest of the, of the community. And we have big announcements to come. Uh, Apache Cassandra will uh, we'll see its uh, next version with major advances such as the support of ACID transactions, which is going to make it even more suitable to more use cases. So we'll bring that scale to more applications. A lot of momentum in terms of, uh, in terms of the, uh, the open source projects. And to your point about the value proposition, we take this great momentum to which we contribute a lot. Uh, it's not only about taking, it's about giving as yeah, well. Big committers, I mean. That's, exactly, yeah. big contributors. And uh, we also have a lot of expertise. We worked with all of the members of the community, many of them being our customers. So going to the cloud, indeed there was architectural work making Cassandra cloud native, putting it on Kubernetes, having the right APIs for developers to, um, to easily develop on top of it, but also becoming a cloud company building customer success, our own platform engineering. We, it's interesting because actually we became like our partners in the community. We now operate Cassandra in the cloud so that all of our customers can benefit from all the power of Cassandra, but it really uh, efficiently, super rapidly, and also with uh, a, uh, uh, the, the leading uh, unit economics, as I mentioned. How will the, the asset compliance affect your, your new markets, new use cases, you know, expand your TAM? Can you explain that? I think it will, uh, more applications will be able to tap into the power of, uh, of NoSQL. Uh, today we see a lot on the customer experience as IoT, gaming platform, a lot of SaaS companies. Uh, but now with the ability uh, to have transactions at the database level, we can, beyond providing information, we can go even deeper into the logic of the, uh, of the application. So it makes Cassandra, and therefore Astra, which is our cloud service, an even uh, more suitable database we can address, uh, address more, even in terms of the transaction that the application itself will, uh, will support. What are some of the business benefits that Cassandra delivers to customers in terms of business outcomes, helping businesses really transform? So Cassandra brings scale. When you have millions of customers, when you have millions of data points to go through to serve each of the customers, one of my favorite examples is Priceline, who runs entirely on our cloud service. You may see one offer, but it's actually everything they know about you and everything they have to offer matched while you're refreshing your page. This is the kind of power that Cassandra provides. But the thing to say about Apache Cassandra, it used to be also a database that was a bit hard to manage and hard to develop with. This is why as part of the cloud, we wanted to change these aspects, provide developers the API they like and need and what the application needs, making it super simple to operate and, and, and super affordable, also cost effective to, uh, to run. So, the, the value, to your point, it's time to market, you go faster, you don't have to worry when you choose the right database, you're not going to have to change horse in the middle of the river like uh, six months down the line, uh, and you know you have the guarantee that you're going to get the performance, and uh, also the best, the best TCO, which matters a lot. I think the previous uh, person talking was uh, addressing it. That's uh, also important, especially in the, in the current context. Right. As a managed service, you're saying. That's the, that was the enabler there, right? I mean, exactly. That, that I, is the model today. I mean, you have to really provide that for customers. They don't want to mess with you know, all the plumbing, right? I mean. Absolutely, I don't think uh, people want to manage databases anymore. We do that very well. We take SLAs and such, and even at the developer level, what they want is an API, so they get all the power, uh, all of this powered by Cassandra, but now they get it as, a, and it's as simple as using as, a, as an API. How about the ecosystem? You mentioned uh, the show in, in San Jose in March, uh, and the Linux Foundation is, is saying hosting that, is yes, that correct? Yes, absolutely. And what is it, Cassandra? Cassandra Summit. Cassandra Summit. Yeah. Talk, what's the ecosystem like today in Cassandra? Can you just sort of describe that? Around Cassandra, you have actually uh, the big hyperscalers. You have also a few other companies that are supporting Cassandra-like uh, technologies. And what's interesting, and that's been a, 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 something we've worked on, but also the Apache project has worked on, working on a lot of the adjacent technologies, the data pipelines, uh, all of the DevOps solutions to make sure that you can actually put Cassandra as part of your way to build these products and, and build these, uh, these applications. So the, uh, the, the ecosystem keeps on, uh, keeps on growing and actually uh, the, uh, the Cassandra community keeps on opening the database so that it, it's really easy to have it connect to the rest of the, uh, the rest environment. And we benefit from all of this in our Astra cloud service. 
So things like machine learning, governance tools, I mean, that's what you would expect in an ecosystem forming exactly. around it, right? So we'll see that in March. I would machine, re machine learning is especially a, a very interesting uh, use case. We see more and more of it. Uh, we recently uh, did a, a nice video with one of our customers called Unifor who does exactly this using also our Astra Cloud service. What they provide is they analyze videos of sales calls and they help actually the sellers telling them, okay, here's what happened, here was the customer sentiment. Because they have proof that the better the sentiment is, the shorter the sales cycle is going to be. So they teach uh, the, uh, the sellers on how to say the right things, how to control the thing. This is machine learning applied on video. Cassandra provides, I think, 200 data points per second that feeds this machine learning. And we see more and more of these use cases, uh, real-time use cases. It happens on the fly, when you're on your phone, uh, when you have a, a, a fraud maybe to detect and to prevent. So there's going to be more and more, and we see more and more of these uh, uh, integration at the open source level with technologies like even Feast, uh, or projects like Apache Feast, but also in the, uh, in, uh, in the partners that we're working with, integrating our service, Cassandra, and our cloud service with. Where are customer conversations these days, given that every company has to be a data company, they have to be able to, to democratize data, allow access to it deep into the, into the organizations, not just IT or the data organization anymore, but are you finding that the conversations are rising up the, up the stack? Is this, is this a, a C-suite priority? Is this a board level conversation? So that's an excellent question. We actually ran a survey uh, this summer called the State of the Data Race, where we, we asked these tech leaders, okay, what's top of mind for you? And real time actually was, uh, was really one of the top priorities. And they explained for the one that, who called themselves digital leaders, uh, that for 71% of them, they could correlate directly the use of real-time data, the quality of their experience or, or their decision making with revenue. Uh, and that's really where the discussion is. And I think it's something we can all relate to as users. We don't want the, I mean, if the Starbucks apps take seconds to, uh, uh, to, to respond, there will be a riot <laughs> over there. So that's, uh, that's something we can feel, but it really now, it's tangible in, uh, in business terms. And now, they, then they take a look at their data strategy. Are we equipped? Very often they will see, yeah, we have pockets of real-time data, but we're not really able to leverage it yeah. for ML use cases, et cetera. So that's a big trend that we're seeing on one end. On the other end, what we're seeing, and it's one of the things we discussed a lot at the event, is that, yeah, cost is important. Uh, growth at all, at all costs does not exist. So we see a lot of push on uh, moving a lot of the workloads to the cloud to make them scale, but at the best, uh, the best cost. And we also see some organizations who are like, okay, let's not uh, let a good crisis go to waste and uh, let's accelerate our innovation, not at all costs, so that we see also a lot of new projects being uh, being pushed, but reasonable, starting small and, uh, and, and growing, and all of this fueled by, uh, by real-time data, so the, interesting. The other big topic amongst you know, the, the customer community is security. Yep. I presume it's coming up a lot. What's the conversation like with Datastax? Uh, that's a topic we've been working on intensely since the creation of Astra less than two years ago, and we keep on uh, reinforcing as any, uh, any cloud provider, yep. not only our own abilities, in terms of making sure that customers can manage their own keys, et cetera, but also integrating to the rest of the, uh, of the ecosystem. When uh, some, uh, a lot of our customers are running on AWS, how do we integrate with private link and such? We fit exactly into their security environment on AWS and they use exactly the same management tool. Because this is also what used to cost a lot in the cloud services. How much do you have to do to wire them and, and manage? And there are indeed compliance and governance challenges. So that's why making sure that it's fully connected, that they have full transparency on what's happening uh, is, is a big part of the uh, evolution. It's always, security is always something you're working on, uh, but it's, it's a major topic for us. Yeah, we talk about that on pretty much every event, security, which we could dive into, but we're out of time. Last question for you. Yes. We're talking before we went live, we're both big four in the one fans. Say Datastax has the opportunity to s sponsor a team and you get the whole side pod to, to put like a phrase about Datastax on the side pod of this F1 car. <laughs> like a billboard, what does it say? Billboard, because an F1 car goes pretty fast. It will be hard to, uh, be hard to read, but... Um, Twice the performance, I have the cost. Try Astra, a cloud service. Drop That's the mic. It. Awesome, Thomas, thanks so much for joining us. Thank Pleasure you for having me. you guys on the program. For our guests, Thomas Bean and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from day four of our coverage, theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.